Ah, Valorant, a game of peace and relaxation. Is there anything more common than sitting back, being in a call with friends, and getting first degree burns because you're a laptop gamer, the leading cause for global warming? Don't worry, even with low FPS, you're still going to love the experience. That is, until the round starts, of course. Don't worry though, you're a brimstone, a different kind. Lay down your smokes and watch your teammates admire your tactical plays. Throw down, down your steam beacon and now Satchel your out. mission is done. Walk back and prepare yourself, cause now you're at peace. Nothing bad is happening anymore. I know exactly. You're one click away of being useful. Molly. It doesn't matter if you die. Your mission is done. So, this intro might make it look like lineups are just the best way to play Valorant, a way to calm down and relax, but if you've ever done lineups, you know it's not that easy. The main problem is that there's always that one enemy that wants revenge because they were killed by a lineup, so they dedicate themselves to check every place where you might be doing a lineup from. Now, normally you would combat this by learning more lineups and being able to diversify where you're shooting from, but that takes too long to learn and there's clearly no tutorials available for that. So I thought, why not just find every single lineup possible in every single map? I know, a real time saver. And even though I am a gamer and I'm used to spending hundreds of hours to just make big number go bigger in video game, I would like to touch grass in my near future. What the foliage is this? So why not turn Valorant into one of those weird mobile games with even weirder ads and make it AFKable? Because everyone knows the most fun way to play a video game is to not. So this is basically how I made a Molly lineup calculator. So step one is to recreate the game which is easier than it sounds because we only really need to recreate the molly and the maps. I actually have a really cool way of doing the first one quickly called plagiarism. I actually have a really cool way of doing the first one quickly, which is getting people to help you without them knowing. Basically, I found these perfect recreations by a channel called Rockland. They're really cool, go check them out. There are three models intended for animation in Blender, but it wasn't too hard to make them work in Unity, which is what I'm going to be using for this project. Next, I had to recreate the Molly, which wasn't that much harder, but it was a lot more time consuming. So, as you can see from the footage here, I was just basically shooting Molly straight up, and then trying to use the maximum height, the amount of bounces, and how high those bounces went to figure out the physics of the molly, specifically the initial velocity, the gravity, and how much the velocities reduce after each bounce. Even though out of just experience, I could tell when some of the shots were wrong, like this one. I realized that shooting straight up and then trying to use ghost mode to figure out how high the mollies went was just not effective, so I decided to switch out the shot for this instead. We would go through a window, hit a pole, and then land on a specific target, which just felt like covered everything that could happen in a typical molly path. But while trying to figure out and adjust all these values properly, I found out that I actually designed my game better than Valorant. What you can see here is my shots are bouncing off the grade, kind of as you would expect. But when you look at the game, you find that there's a bunch of objects like this one, this one, this one, all of these, and a lot more that I'll display on screen that appear there visually, but not actually have a collision. It's actually pretty interesting how things like this windmill, which I'm not sure how you would actually do a lineup with this, but you can't even if you want to. Then there's also things like this cloth, which even though you can shoot from above and it'll pass through like all the other objects, if you try to shoot it from below, yeah, it's as solid as rock. So what I ended up doing was going into Blender and then just deleting anything that didn't have a collision, which I just figured out by testing it in game. So 
So yeah, after this we can port this back into Unity and use it as the new mesh. And I will leave the old design for the visuals just because this is more realistic to the game. But all, everything that doesn't have collision in game doesn't have in my simulation either. Five minutes in and still no calculating. Okay, let's speed this up. I could use some fancy technique like branch searching or AI like the cool YouTubers do, but there's a better way. This just works harder and not smarter and shoot every single shot possible. I know this looks like a joke, but it is surprisingly effective, which makes sense since this is what computers were originally made for. Next, I'll add a spike object that just determines if a molly is lined up close enough for it to be valid, and if it does, I'll send this special kind of molly that just leaves a trail behind. After adjusting the values for a while, this technically is already able to calculate any lineup, but we can do it better. With this setup, we're shooting about 65,000 shots per lineup. Now, this means it would be too slow to find most lineups in the game, let alone be able to find one during a match, which would be the golden standard. I can actually force the simulation to go as fast as I want just by raising this value, but this makes it more inaccurate. Let me explain. A lot of physics engines, like the one in Unity, are based on an updating system. Every frame, the game will move an object forward depending on its velocity, but it also depends on how much time goes between each frame. That way, even when your game is lagging, the simulation is still running at the same speed. This is problematic though, because if the game is lagging too much, it'll start miscalculating bounces or even phase through walls. So before we can ramp up the speed, we have to make this code more efficient. To do this, we're going to have to start deleting as many unnecessary shots as possible. An easy example is just to remove every shot that's shooting below 90 degrees, because it's not going to reach the spike anyways. Optimizing it further though is going to be a lot harder. The problem is, the code doesn't know anything about the map before it starts shooting. So you might think this shot's clearly bad, but it turns out there's a wall here that bounces it perfectly towards the spike. Or maybe shooting backwards seems useless, but it might be the only option. I actually tried to put this off just because it's a really hard problem to tackle with, and in the meantime I thought I'd just add a world border that kills mollies if they go out of bounds. And this concept is actually really useful. The idea of killing a molly not before it's shot, but after it's traveled far enough that we know it's not going to make it. This is what led me to figure out the thing that actually makes this code smart. If a molly travels so far that even with perfect bounces it wouldn't be able to make it all the way to the spike, we can already kill it. So I made a formula that estimates how far a spike can go given its relative height and velocity. Now we don't take into account the direction though because it can always bounce into the right direction and if it's farther than this distance we just kill them. This doesn't actually reduce the molly count at all but it means that in a single simulation, rather than having about 130,000 bounces, we have less than 50,000, which is a great improvement. At this point, we can run the simulation at four times speed and still get accurate shots, which is basically as good as it gets. I did add a couple more things to make the code run better, but none of them are really worth mentioning, so I'll just call those experimental features. Or, if you want, I can always make a part 2 to this video and explain further into detail some of the techniques I used, and also the problems I ran into trying to make this thing work. So yeah, here's the final result. Now, before I go ahead and test this in a real match against real players, I want to let you know that if you want to download this for yourself, just leave a comment asking for it, and if enough of you do, I'll make the part 2 where I go further into detail and explain how to download it and use the program. So without further ado, here's my Brimstone Molly calculator against Valorant players.
Enemy remaining. Smoke's down. Molly. 